Music was esteemed to be of such power and virtue by the ancients, but it was their opinion that our very souls were harmony. And because of this, that sweet, mellow harmonies were powerful to temper uncontrolled emotions, preventing discord. Therefore, they took care to welcome good professors of that science, and to honor them with every kind of honor as being useful in their republics. For the Egyptians never allowed their system of music to be changed by even one note. And, just as they had established it, so they continued to accept it for more than 10,000 years, according to their calendar. Because they were sure they could not change the rules and laws of music without serious damage to the body politic. There is Pythagoras' assertion that the whole world is made according to a musical plan, and that the seven stars wandering between heaven and earth which affect the birth of mortals, move rhythmically and in positions corresponding to musical intervals, giving forth various sounds consonant with their altitude, which together make the most exquisite melody. But it is inaudible to us because of the grandeur of the sound, which our limited ears are incapable of hearing. The power of harmony employs the two highest and most wonderful of our senses, seeing and hearing, which hearken most of all to the ruling part of the soul and support it with their perceptions. That which is only visible manifests also to hearing with the help of speech. That which is only audible manifests to sight with the help of writing. Thus, each of these senses achieves more than if it had only conveyed its own impressions. It is so in the two most rational of the relevant sciences, namely astronomy, which is concerned with the sight and movement of heavenly bodies, which are only visible, and harmonics, which is concerned with hearing and the movement of the invisible world of sound. Both are guided by arithmetic and geometry in order to measure the quantity and quality of the principal movements.